What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video today. We're doing a special video on the channel talking about is Hendra Motorsports back or not? This is a question I've really had since the beginning of the year and I think we have an answer to that but we're going to start off by going through the history of Hendra Motorsports from around 2014 up to 2021. In 2014, Hendra Motorsports, you had Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, and Donor Jr., a lot of veteran drivers in a really good core lineup as well. Jimmy Johnson in 2014 was coming off of a championship in 2013 when he won eight races that season and was really, really good in 2013. In 2014, he took somewhat of a downward spiral, wasn't as good in 2014 as he was in 2013, but he still ended up scoring four victories that year in 2014. Donor Jr., the second driver at Hendry Motorsports, he had one of the best seasons of his NASCAR Cup Series career as he really was looking for that first win in return since he had one in 2012 and his third win at Hendry Motorsports. Well, in 2014, he won the Daytona 500, he swept the Pocono races, and he also ended up winning, I believe, at Martinsville's one won the grandfather clock. And Casey Kane also, actually, then we go to Jeff Gordon, where Jeff Gordon actually won four races as well. Now, Jeff Gordon only won one race in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. But in 2014, Jeff Gordon had the best season of his career since 2007, scoring four victories that year. And arguably, the guy probably should have won the championship in 2014 before an incident happened at Texas and in Phoenix as well, which really took him out. He scored four victories that year at Kansas. He ended up winning Michigan, the Brickyard 400, and he also ended up winning at Dover later that year. And Jeff Gordon was really, really good that year. The final driver at Hendry Motorsports, like I mentioned, Casey Kane, only scored one victory, but that came at Atlanta Motors Speedway, which would prompt him into the playoffs. As Casey Kane had a kind of a struggling year, there were things that went wrong for him. He led laps in Michigan, he was really strong at Pocono. Things kind of went wrong for Casey Kane, but he still had a solid year, and he was able to make the playoffs. In 2015, Jeff Gordon would announce that he would be retiring after the end of 2015 year, and Hendrick Motorsports actually would take a little bit of a step downwards. Casey Kane failed to win a race in 2015, actually I believe missed the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken, in 2015. I could be wrong on that, but he, he kind of struggled in the 2015 season. Dale Nard Jr., he still ended up winning three races that year, winning at Talladega, the July Daytona race, and he won at Phoenix. So he had been eliminated at Talladega after it issues earlier in the season. And then we go to Jimmy Johnson, who Jimmy Johnson scored five victories that year in 2015, but he would not be able to make it to the after out of the first round after engine issues would take place as he did not have enough points. Now, if playoff points would have become a thing, he probably would have made it through the first round of the playoffs. He ended up basically having issues at early, a couple of the races early in the playoffs. And the race that he won in 2015, as a matter of fact, I believe were Kansas, Atlanta, uh, Dover. Did he win at Dover? I don't remember exactly. I think he won Dover, Atlanta, Kansas. He won a couple races in 2015. He won quite a few races in the 2015 season. It was very, very solid. Actually, Texas as well, beating Brad Zoski there in a very sharp shooting fashion. He basically had a car to beat in that race. Jimmy Johnson was really, really strong. And, of course, the final driver of Andrew Motorsports, Jeff Gordon, he went on to win only one race in 2015. He didn't have a great year in 2015, but he didn't have a terrible year either. And he would have the best finishing points he had since 2007. Actually, 2009. 2016 is where Hendrick Motorsports took another step backwards. Hendrick Motorsports only ended up winning five races in 2016, and the only driver to do that was Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson won five races, but this also would be statistically Jimmy Johnson's worst season of his career, even though he won a seven championship in 2016 with five victories, winning those races at Atlanta, Auto Club, Martinsville, Charlotte, and Homestead. Basically, he still would have the least top fives and top tens in the worst average finish of his Cup Series career. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon retired after 2015, and Chase Elliott would take over. Chase Elliott was absolutely super, super consistent, but he still failed to win races in the 2016 season. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr. actually would end up getting injured in the middle of the year in 2016 and would fall out of the ride in the 2016 season. And Casey Kane's season and bad strengths continued to struggle, and he had a really bad year in the 2016 season. 2017, Hendrick Motorsports to take another step downwards as Hendrick Motorsports is only able to score four victories in the 2017 season. Three of those coming with Jimmy Johnson, who, where he would win early in the year at Dover. He would also win before that a couple times at Texas and Bristol. And that would be the only times to win before he started taking, once again, a very downward spot after getting involved in a very, very bad wreck at Pocono, which should take him down in the wrong direction. 
The only other driver to win at Hendrick Motorsports would be Casey Kane, who really wasn't that fantastic in 2017, but he won in a crazy race at the Brickyard 400 in 2017 and ended up winning his final career race then in 2017. Meanwhile, Darren Hart Jr. had come to return to go full-time racing, really, really struggled in his final full-time season as he had been announced that Alex Wilson would be taking over his car. He absolutely struggled. Fell out of that ride and completely dropped. I don't think he finished in the top 20 points at all. He only had a few top fives and a few top tens. And he really, really struggled in the 2017 season. Arguably the only driver that really, really is somewhat shining throughout the whole entire year was Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott had a few times where he honestly almost should have won. He almost won Dover in the playoffs of 2017. But he had trouble there getting passed by Kyle Busch with two laps to go. Ryan Newman really did not help that. And he also had the fact that in 2017 in Marsville, he had a lead after bumping Brad Keselowski out of the way, and Kyle Busch basically, and then you had, of course, Denny Hamlin bumping in the back of him, and almost a fight breaking out, which should have almost happened that year. Now we go to 2018, and Hendra Motorsports is at the lowest point of their career. They had basically made the move in decision to move William Byron up to full-time after winning the 2017 Asperger's Mini Series Championship, of course, being the youngest full-time Cup Series driver, he would drive full-time in the number 24 car, and Chase Selly move over to 9, and Alex Bowman would move into the 88 car. And because it's Hendrick Motorsports struggle, it did not also help that Cam the Camaro that they brought in 2018 was really, really bad aerodynamically, and Chevy overall in every team, including Kyle Lars, who had the best season of his career in 2017, he would also struggle, which would eventually become a driver for Hendrick Motorsports, we'll talk about soon. But in 2018, Hedger Motorsports had absolutely struggled. They only scored three victories in 2018, and those only came from Chase Elliott. But get this, it took them until the 22nd race of the year in 2018 for Hedger Motorsports to break through and get that first win of the season. With Chase Elliott winning his first career race at Watkins Glen, and then winning at Kansas, and then winning at Dover later in the year. He only scored three victories that year and got to the round of eight of the playoffs, but was eliminated in the round of eight. Meanwhile, the rest of Hendrick Motorsports struggled. William Byron, the rookie at Hendrick Motorsports, was absolutely terrible in his rookie year, finishing 23rd in the standings. I only believe he had three or four top tens in the 2018 season, and he absolutely struggled. Alex Bollamoy kind of struggled at the beginning of 2018. His consistency started to pick up, and he was very consistent in the playoffs and made it to the round of 12. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson had the worst season of his NASCAR Cup Series career. He made the playoffs just barely in 2018 and got eliminated in the first round after it looked like he might have had a shot to win against Martin Truex Jr. He overdrove the corner at the Charlotte Roval and took himself out and Martin Truex Jr. out and absolutely struggled that year. They both absolutely failed and really, really struggled in the 2018 season. And Chase Love was the only one that really got bad. Then in 2019, things seemed to start picking up for Andrew Motorsports after I think they made some cosmetic changes in the 2019 season. And things picked up just a little bit for Hendrick Motorsports as you had more wins come into Hendrick Motorsports apartment with Hendrick Motorsports instead of getting three wins that year. They ended up getting only four wins in 2019, but they picked up their stats that year. Chase Lane once again would only win three races in the 2019 season with those coming at Talladega, Watkins Glen, and then the Charlotte Roval, but he was very consistent. But in the final round of the plus, he absolutely had the worst run in the plus in the round of eight we've ever seen. He absolutely showed, had three finishes outside of top 30, and would not run for a championship in the 2019 season. The other driver that really was strong in the 2019 season was actually Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman actually was really, really consistent in the middle stretch of the year, of course, with the 550 horsepower package. He ended up almost winning Kansas, was really, really fast at Dover, and he finally scored that first win, beating Kyle Larson at Chicago and Speedway. Now, he honestly had the win in the bag, and then Paul Menard kind of got in the way in that race, and Kyle Larson looked like he was going to have a shot of beating him, getting his first win in nearly two years. But Al Sullivan persevered, and he got back around Kyle Larson around six or seven laps ago. He ended up scoring his only win of the 2019 season at the final race at Chicago and Speedway. The other two drivers, on the other hand, William Byron. Really, really improved in 2019. Took a major step forward. Of course, he worked with Chad Canals that year, and he took a major step forward in his Cup Series and Young Cup Series career, taking a step forward from going to be a mid-20 pack driver to being a driver that was consistently contending for top 10s and consistently made the plus and almost made it to the round of eight off of consistency alone. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson absolutely struggled in the 2019 season. He only had a few top fives and a few top tens a year. He had one really strong run at Chicago, but really other than that, 
He absolutely struggled. He had multiple crew chief changes as Chad Knauss moved over from the number 48 car over to crew chief for William Byron in 2019. And he absolutely struggled in that year. And because of this, he absolutely took a major step backwards in the 2019 season. Absolutely struggled and didn't even make the playoffs in the 2019 season. Then 2020 rolls around, and it looks like there might be some optimism happening because I think this actually was a year that did cosmetic changes to the car. And things look pretty obviously more optimistic for the Hendrick Motorsports camp. Hendrick Motorsports actually took a major step forward with Hendrick Motorsports actually winning multiple races in the 2020 season, including actually finally getting a championship in the 2020 season with Ace Elliott. Chase Elliott scored five wins in the 2020 season, one of those coming at Charlotte in the middle of the year. Then winning a couple more times at the Daytona Road Course, then winning the Charlotte Roble, then winning the Marsville, and then winning the championship race at Phoenix, and finally scoring Hendrick's first championship since 2000, since 2016. William Byron started off the year kind of bad, but as the year got on, he got super assistant and got his first career win in the Cup Series at Daytona and almost made it to the round of eight in the NASCAR Cup Series Plus. Alex Bowen was absolutely consistent in the 2020 season as we got farther in the year, and he actually was able to make the round eight, and he won a second career race at Auto Club, and it looked like he was going to be one of the championship favorites early in the year. Kind of fell out of that contention, but in the playoffs, he looked absolutely smooth, absolutely strong, and was really, really fast in the second half year. So Alex Bowman had a lot of speed in the second half. The next drive, the final driver, Jimmy Johnson, absolutely kind of strong. In the beginning of the year, he actually looked like he was coming back to his known ways, Left laps in multiple races in the season, but had issues in the middle of the year. Had a couple races he looked strong and only missed it out by three points. Of course, he ended up having a cup getting pot testing positive for COVID 19 in 2020, which was a really, really big disappointment because Jimmy Johnson was absolutely not that great. But Jimmy Johnson absolutely started making his comeback in 2020, and it looked like he was going to make the playoffs. And because of a crash at Daytona, with that being the cutoff race, that would take him out of contention, and that would screw his opportunity of making it into the playoffs. And he wasn't that great in the playoffs, to be honest, except his final full-time Cup Series race when he retired at the end of 2020. That would be the last time he would race. Then the big acquisition happened. Kyle Larson was going to replace Jimmy Johnson in the 2020 season. Now we jump up to 2021, where are we at now? And Hedger Motorsports has looked really, really solid so far in the 2021 season. We're going to start off, first of all, with Kyle Larson, the driver who replaced Jimmy Johnson. Kyle Larson, so far in the 2021 season, has scored one win, has had five top fives, seven top tens, has led 511 laps, and has a 13.9 average finish so far in the 2021 season. And in my honest opinion, he should have a few more top fives and a few more top tens and probably would have won more races in the 2021 season. Look back at a ton of road course where he crashed that was on his own, but he crashed in that race. You look back at um, Bristol Dury, who was the favorite coming into that, and got involved with that kid to drive from the back. And if he would have started on the pole like he originally was supposed to start on the pole, he would have ended up winning that race. He would have been the leader coming off of that, or been up front, wouldn't have had to run into those issues at the Bristol Dirt. You have to look back at Talladega, where they had an engine coiling issue, and they ended up finishing last. And you look back at some of the other races that he's had, he honestly, right now, and look back at Kansas too, nonetheless, he honestly probably should have won that race, or at least contended for a top five in that race, had the best car in that event. Kyle Larson is absolutely strong. He's been arguably the strongest driver so far at the Hendrick Motorsports Camp and has been really good so far. But he's been most the best driver, in my opinion, on the 550 horse hour package races, especially the mile-and-a-half track. She was really, really surprised that Kyle Larson before that was not really good. I think they made the best decision of picking up Kyle Larson. The second driver we're going to talk about is William Byron. William Byron has really impressed me so far this year. This year, they made some important changes for William Byron, having him pair up with Rudy Field. He was working with in 2016, and this pair, him and William Byron and Rudy Field, have really worked very, very well. William Byron has one win so far this year at home San Miami Speedway, but he has been absolutely consistent so far. He only has four top fives, but get this, he has 10 top tens. And one thing to know, William Byron has 10 straight top tens. This is the first time that someone's had 10 consecutive top 10 start a year since Jeff Gordon in 2007. He's led 150 laps, and he has a 9.7 average finish off of consistency alone. William Byron has absolutely been incredible this year. He's an underdog for the Final Four right now, and I think that William Byron is going to continue to get better and become a better driver as year goes on. And I think that we will see more wins out of William Byron this year in the 2021 season. 
The third driver we're going to talk about is Chase Elliott. Now, Chase Elliott, I think, has been the most disappointing driver so far of the 2020 season for the Cups. You're watching out most of the Cup series. There's other drivers we can talk about there. But he's been the most disappointing driver so far at Hendrick Motorsports. He's had zero wins this year, four top fives, and six top tens, which is not too bad. But get this, he's only led 76 laps so far this year with a 12.8 average finish. Chase Elliott is the only one that's really not shown any contending scenes. He's basically been around the 7th, 8th place most races between the 8th and 10th range most races this year. But he's been kind of points struggling as well so far this year in 2021. And to me, he's got to start picking up soon. But one thing that's really interesting about Chase Elliott's career that I found out, Chase Elliott has only won two of his first 11 career victories in the first 20 races of the year. That coming at Charlotte in 2019. And before that in 2019 at, at uh, Talladega. And after that, 2020 as Charlotte. Only two of those wins have come in the first 20 races. So I'm not too worried about Chase Elliott. But I think he's been the most disappointing in this one driver so far. The defending champion. But I think that first one will come here very, very soon. At a track that we'll talk about here very, very shortly. And the final driver Hendrick Hendry Motorsports currently right now is Alex Bowen. Alex Bowman has one win so far this year at Richmond a couple weeks ago. He only has two top fives and four top tens and only 11 laps led, all those coming at Richmond International Speedway, and he has an 18th place average finish. But one thing to note about Alex Bowman so far in 2021 is there's been a lot of bad breaks and a lot of bad luck for Alex Bowman so far this year. A lot of races where he's had speed, too, nonetheless. Back in Daytona where he started on the pole, got involved in the big one early in the race. Back in Las Vegas, was running in 8th or ninth most of the day. Basically had a tire go down late in the race and almost got into it with Anthony Alfredo crash on the front stretch. Looking back at Martinsville, where he was one of the contenders, then he had an issue come down pit row for a tire blink was loose, if I'm not mistaken. Had to come down pit row to fix that and then got involved in the big one in the middle to late portions of the race. You have to look back at Talladega where he got involved in a small wreck that was caused by Denny Hamlin, who was trying to get back in the lead lap. And then you have to look back at some of the other races as well. And also Bristol Dirt, nonetheless, where he had a really fast car and had one couldn't get back into fifth gear, into fourth gear, lost one of the gears in his car. So he absolutely struggled in that race. So Alex Bowman has had a lot of bad luck. I don't think he's been the most disappointing driver at Hendrick so far. I just think there's been a lot of bad luck for Alex Bowman so far in the 2021 season. So the big question that I started the episode is Hendrick Motorsports back? Yes, I think Hendrick Motorsports has been back since last year, especially since they won the championship last year. In the 2020 uh, season, I think that they have been back. They've been really, really consistent so far this year. They've only won three races so far, but they honestly could have won a lot of races this year. Chase Selling honestly should have a win. That should, of course, that should have come at the Daytona Road Course. They honestly could have, should have won Kansas. They should have won a lot of races this year in the 2020 season. They could have won the Daytona 500. They could have won the third race of the year. Actually, they didn't win the third race of the year. They could have won a lot of races this year in 2021, and there's been some races where they should have won. They've they not won this year. They almost won Darlington this year, as a matter of fact, with Kyle Larson this past weekend. So I absolutely 100% believe that Hendrick Motorsports is back, and their team is going to continue to win, and I think they're only going to get better as time goes on. So, anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR special video. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, notifications on see me notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Link description below for that, and comment your thoughts on today's video. What are your thoughts, and let me know if you think if Hendrick Motorsports is officially back or not. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content. Take care, everybody.